Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. Our topic today is the future of initiation. My guest is Andy Hilton. He is the author of Anthropology and Mysticism in the Making of Initiation. He is also co-editor of the Anthology Perspectives on Commoning. He's come to Albuquerque all the way from Istanbul, Turkey. Welcome, Andy. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you Likewise, yeah. w- once again. Mm. I um, know in one of our previous conversations offline, as I recall, mm-hmm. uh, I referred to initiation as a ritual. And, and I mm. know you, you took a Objection to that a little <laughs> bit. You thought it's mm. not exactly a ritual, it's a mm. process. Right, uh, and famously, Victor Turner described it as the ritual process. Uh, th- th- this is problematic, uh, our idea of what a ritual is, and it's usual not to dwell too much on this subject. But ritual studies is a subject all of its own. Uh, there is a historical tendency in initiation studies to focus very much on the ceremonial, on the public ritual, the set piece, the drama, uh, as, as an event, rather than seeing it as an unfolding. In the anthropology, we can see ritual process in, in a societal context that may take a couple of decades, and it's punctured by specific dramas, uh, which we would recognize as rituals, uh, but the whole thing is a, is a process, a developmental uh, process. I know there are people who say that uh, one of the problems of modern life is that it's become, to a large extent, devoid of rituals, that people see the need for more rituals uh, in, in our lives. I'm, I'm not sure I agree with that. Uh, uh, I mean, to me, uh, some of the most profound forms of initiation might take place in a dream. Yeah, and in the external world, we ritualize. Uh, We are speaking right now on the the morning after the the death of Kobe Bryant. Many people will ritualize this event. It will be felt across uh, this nation, for sure, and and worldwide. It will have a resonance. Just the the death of one person is ritualized privately. You don't have to do anything for a ritualization to occur. But whenever anybody watched... uh, Go to go went to see the games with him playing. That would be a ritual event. Every sports event is a ritual. It's, 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 there's yeah. lots of ritual going on. Yeah. So you have a vision, however, uh, having created uh, or initiated or uh, named uh, a discipline of huh. initiation studies. You have huh. a, a, v- a vision that this field, initiation studies, will have a future, and and that initiation will have a future across all elements of our society. <laughs> I fancy having such a vision. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, to go back a step, I would just like to delve a fraction into the the discourse. I, I refer to the discourse, and uh, the discourse of initiation is primarily of something that no longer exists in the anthropological field. It starts off with like a, a golden a golden beginning where a single event would initiate somebody into adulthood and into the mystical realms, and, and then it kind of uh, diffused and digressed and was gradually deformed so it separated into a spiritual adult, into male, female, and then secret societies and brotherhoods, and then it became less and less powerful as we moved into the industrial era. It couldn't really continue, and a major thesis of Victor Turner, for example, is that it cannot pertain in today's society. And there is no initiation. It's pretty standard to say that there is no initiation in society into adulthood. Uh, I don't agree. One of the most obvious institutions of in of institution uh, institutions of initiation 
is the education system. It meets all the criteria. So we all are initiated insofar as we go through the education system. The education system is a system of, of initiation. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's no coincidence that the, the, no coincidence that at the end of it, some people will become doctors. Doctors, as in doctors of medicine, as in uh, medicine people, medicine men. It's uh, doctors is a name for sorcerer, for shaman, for spirit worker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Recall that just a few nights ago we were watching Doctor Strange, the yeah. movie, and <laughs> exactly, and he, he becomes made a point yeah. of, of referring to himself as as doctor. <laughs> yeah, doctor, doctor who, doctor something. Yeah, there was a, yeah, indeed, there yeah. was a little play of, of words on the name Doctor there was, Strange. There was, and also on that specific uh, idea of doctor, that's like fur going further in education. Mm -hmm. So uh, so it's like we, we have a minimum uh, period where we have to uh, be go to school or something like that. And then the, there is optional period after that we may extend. And that's also a format found in, in some initiatory systems in, in the tribal context that uh, there are like, say, three levels that are, are are mandatory and then three further levels are optional for those who want to specialize in the spirit worker role, for example. Now, as I recall, you also uh, made a point of looking at the uh, word often associated with graduation, matriculate. Ah, yes, well spotted, yeah. Uh, in the development of initiation as a subject of study in anthropology, initially it was placed in the same grouping of, of of subjects as education, children, games, this area. Only later, around 1870, was it moved into the section on circumcision, taboo, totem, ritual. So it took a shift there. And that's a, a discursive shift, I think. It was moved out of education realm into the ritual realm. Uh, but matriculation invites the, invites the, the, the understanding of, of this growing up, this, this raising of status as an education, not an as, not as a, a mystical initiation. That's this. It can be a, viewed differently, and it could have gone that way, it's possible. I, I was wondering if the word matriculate had something to do with the idea of the mother, the feminine. I'm sure it does. It, it, its roots must do. Uh, I have no idea about how to connect that, but yeah. did you have something in mind? No, I, okay. I, I, I don't exactly, although right. uh, I think there is a point, let mm -hmm. me put it this way, mm -hmm. I think there is a point mm -hmm. at which every... Um, human being, whether male or female, comes to acknowledge uh, within themselves both genders. Uh-huh. Okay. So, for a male to matriculate might be to become conscious of the inner feminine. Yeah, that would be like a Jungian perspective. And then another perspective is that we move from the, the realm of the mother into the realm of the father insofar as we go from the home to the social world. So, there, there is a move from across genders. So, we naturally, in that move, incorporate both genders mm -hmm. internally. That would be another way of expressing yeah. that, that idea matriculate we're moving into or from the matrix or from the womb yeah you can t go down that path yeah. yeah well you've approached initiation largely from the perspective of anthropology yeah that was my starting point and i only came to the mystical point towards the end and came into new ideas and the idea that uh, we do have initiation I, my center of gravity was very much on where we've come from and the anthropological point, yeah. But Except that mm. prior to even engaging in this exploration, you yourself ex had an experience of, of cosmic consciousness, as, as you <laughs> describe it, in the process of, of a shamanic workshop. Well, yes, true. <laughs> so that's your starting point. Yeah, well, from okay. There you jump into anthropology. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. And and if we look at the 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 
the roots of of the discourse of initiation it, it was uh, very much a, a scientization of the mysteries discourse and it, be, it started as the mysteries which already was a, a capturing of many traditions in the first place but we had the mysteries discourse which moved into initiation into the mysteries and then we dropped the mysteries altogether and that was the <laughs> I was interested in that that yeah. development and how mm -hmm. we could continue that and understand that but of course, yeah, we go back at the root, we do have the mystery. And then we come back to ed education. And what is the real education? Surely the real education is, is not just about some, uh, the, the orbitals of the, the oxygen atom or, or the, the date when some national event occurred. The real education is much more profound. It's about our, our very being, our existence. It's, it's philosophical. It's the love of wisdom. And that really takes us into the, the deeper areas. Of so because I, I am under the impression that your interest in, in seeing a field of initiation studies mm. established, uh, and I think by that you mean across academia. Well, why not? That, that, uh, if there's a group of scholars who are mm. really taking this area seriously, that's going to have a ripple effect across culture and uh, as a whole and across uh, the broader educational system. Yeah, it might do. And certainly the interest in initiation, which really came through in the 1960s to the, like a pinnacle in the 1980s, that did have effects on the initiation, on the education system in England. There was I forget his name, Peters. I forget his first name, and he 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 conceived of uh, of education as as initiation, and we did have a, a shifting towards a more holistic vision in some sense, but it didn't really come through. I, I wouldn't say, but one can imagine. Uh, a future education system which is very well one can hardly imagine the current education system continuing i don't think it's very much a b link to the the factory industrial format and and with the virtual uh, possibilities that we have unfolding it's going to be changing incredibly uh, we we we're very at a very early stage of changing the education system but one can imagine and hope for a less left brain orientated system whereby people who are not intellectually very competent are not failures because they have other skills in which we associate as right brain skills. And then we're going to be dealing much more with intuition. And there, in there we can see a real, a, a way in which initiation might come into play, though it's pretty inchoate in my mind. I don't have a way to verbalize that very well. Well, in some of our conversations, we were referring to a, a kind of a groundswell of organizations, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. government, typically private organizations, fraternal organizations, uh, mm. um, yoga, mm -hmm. uh, lineages, mm -hmm. uh, the Western Rosicrucian, mm -hmm. uh, Masonic mm -hmm. lineages, mm -hmm. uh, Gnostic lineages. Um, so you could say that, you know, the perennial philosophy in, in many of its various uh, forms, whether it be Vedanta or Hermetic, are, are sort of bubbling up in the culture uh, in, in uh, multiple ways. Yeah, I, I th uh, especially in the West, possibly, because it was in the West where so much has been lost, uh, possibly more in America, possibly more in California, um, coming through the, the New Age, the Age of Aquarius, the, the Awakening. We, we do have that sense of it. It may be, uh, it may be uh, an accurate sense of things, yeah. Well, the, those institutions provide... Uh, one might say models mm -hmm. for uh, the potential of, of a more widespread uh, appreciation of the initiatory traditions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Indeed, getting away from the specif specificities of initiatory traditions and just going back to the more general uh, uh, sense of of new age, we see, we do see a lot of like we have group work in very very straightforward business contexts yes. so it's it's it is spreading through th in a more social sense in that way uh, um, 
how how initiation plays into this there's there's more than one way that one can imagine it we can um, i'm not sure i have a clear answer on this particular question well you mentioned group work in business and that's an interesting example i mm -hmm. as an undergraduate I, as i was explaining to you at the university of wisconsin mm -hmm. in psychology i worked with uh, a professor i got to know rather well david bradford mm -hmm. he uh, he had a special program for where undergraduate students could serve as uh, Uh, TAs, teaching assistants in, okay. in his course. So mm -hmm. I was a teaching assistant for mm -hmm. him, even as an undergraduate. Well, mm -hmm. his father, mm -hmm. Leland Bradford, was the founder of the Encounter Group movement. Mm -hmm. Okay. And mm -hmm. Dave Bradford, of course, mm -hmm. was, had been brought up in that tradition. Encounter mm -hmm. groups mm -hmm. were very popular back in the 1960s, and it was an opportunity for for people to come together in a small group and sort of encounter each other at a deeper level than normal conventional social conversation. In other words, open up about their feelings. And uh, he left the University of Wisconsin around the same time I did. When I graduated, he left mm -hmm. and he was hired at Stanford University in their school of business. Huh, okay. Mm -hmm. To, to mm -hmm. train Uh, the future business leaders, Stanford University School of Business, one of the finest in the country. Mm. And, and so the, uh, young business leaders to be were being trained in, mm -hmm. uh, the principles of encounter groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a very, uh, a very good example of how the, the new age philosophy is, has been spreading and percolating through the culture and, In the education field, we've had it in terms of like learner-centered uh, instruction, where the, it's not at so much what you can give, but more what they're looking for, uh, yeah. how we can facilitate that. Uh, th this is a generalized, a generalized development, which we, we, we expect to continue and hope will continue on the path. How it relates to initiation is a little bit, uh, tricky but one can easily uh formulate uh developmental paths based on initiatory uh levels mm. uh that's that's uh, been done many times in many different ways yeah. i i recall from our earlier conversation uh talking about the association of humanistic psychology mm -hmm. it was once at the forefront of what was known as the human potential movement mm -hmm. back in the 1960s mm -hmm. 1970s i'm mm -hmm. a former vice president of that association okay. and uh -huh. uh, it was uh, sort of um associated with people like Abraham Maslow, Carl Rogers. It was considered the, the third force in mm. psychology after mm -hmm. behaviorism and Freudian psychology mm -hmm. came humanistic psychology. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I, I see now that the organization has kind of declined. There are Uh, for example, uh, AHP groups, Association of Humanistic Psychology groups on mm. Facebook and mm. LinkedIn, but the membership is small. Mm. I think the conferences are small, but at the same time, the impact of, of that particular wave is now diffused throughout the culture. Right, so there's been an incorporation of the thrust of that way of being, approaching, uh, encounters, life, development, yeah. Now yeah. How, how might you couch that in terms of initiation? I don't know. Well, one could couch it in terms of the vocabulary and conceptualization around the central experience taking that central experience uh as 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 a cosmic consciousness or unity con yeah. of source got taking that so so in that framework we would have a step a step rather than a hierarchy i would like i would see it as an inner mm -hmm. uh i'm referring here to 
a, a wonderful book, uh, Metaphors We Live By, uh, Lakoff and Johnson. Mm -hmm. So with hierarchies, up is good. So we all like to be on top of the world. Nobody likes to be pushed down. Up is good. And mystically, uh, we have uh, airborne uh, flying lights uh, phenomena. So the high, uh, we feel maybe feel high. Uh, and that, for me, the hierarchy and a lot of us have a difficulty with hierarchy. Commoning we talked about is much more like a horizontal level mm -hmm. e egalitarian framing. And we, how a hierarchy has a kind of a link with the patriarchy and something we may be not yeah. awfully happy with. Uh, that's taken us to a, a bad point in our civilization. We might even argue uh, contrary or, or uh, complementary or not alternative view would be uh, going inwards, so in is good. Uh, for example, nobody wants to be left out. We all want to be in the know. We want to go deep. So we don't want to be superficial. So we use that modeling or um, that's my idea of a modeling. So that, that could be directly translated into an initiatory framework. So we start on the external with the social, which involves group consciousness. and contains within that the psychological, which is the individual consciousness. And then we go deeper or more inward and we come to the mystical, which is the collective consciousness. And then we go further, further in and we, we come to the cosmic, which is God consciousness. And there is a point within that where we go to no God, and that's a little bit... Do we, we go to... No God. No God. Yeah, and then we go beyond human consciousness, uh -huh. and we go, we go, we, we expand beyond that. Uh -huh. That's another stage again, which I can't talk of because I haven't experienced beyond it. Beyond all conception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't say, as I say, I can't say too much about that because I haven't experienced it, but I understand it, it can be experienced mm -hmm. and one, two people have experienced it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's certainly a Buddhist path. Uh, and logically, uh, God implies no God, which would be a, a kind of a trans theism, uh, that there, there is both God and no, and there is both God and no God. Mm -hmm. There's an op opposition to there is neither God nor no God, which is a different kind of logic to the standard contradiction of either God or no God. Uh, there's a lot of logical uh, work to do there. We don't have to go into that too oh, much. Oh, okay, well, um, I'm very interested in, in theology and probably pretty ignorant about it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. And the word God, again, we, I'm using the old language. I mean, now we should, you know, it's, it's, much, it's much more hip to say like source. Uh, we're moving post-religious phase, as I said, we're moving post-religious phase. So putting, putting the uh, initiatory spin on this, mm -hmm. uh, the religious age, uh, let's say that was a couple of thousand years, for example. Uh, and then we have, so that would be the separation phase of the initiation. And then the initiation itself, the liminality would be uh, the phase of spirituality. Uh, and that's like the 1900s. Now, into the third millennium, we're going into a new paradigm where the, the world as a whole is connected, where we're talking about Gaia consciousness, where the imminent, apocalyptic, destructive end of world civilization, west of civilization, at the same time opens out into something new. We do ascend, that is the the ideal, the hope, the thought, the possibility, and we go through a, 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 a global rebirth. And that's how the initiation uh, uh, motif can be placed onto a much wider scale of, of uh, what is talked about, for example, going from 3, 4D to 5D. But it involves certainly the human developing our psych capacities. It involves the paranormal not being paranormal, but being a richer reality. I think those 
kinds of things are, are kind of nuts and bolts of the process. And that includes uh, a, a wider curriculum at school. So Harry Potter is not just some far-fetched fantasy, but actually kind of becomes integrated in, into the future systems that we develop. In other words, the very popular Harry Potter novels and, and movies serve as a uh, an image of uh, sort of tantalizing or, or uh, pulling us into a, a whole new way of being. I would say that yes, and 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 it's a, that was a wonderful creation, and and uh, I, I guess a Jungian perspective would say that she, she didn't just come up with it out of nowhere. She was drawing from the collective consciousness for a future precognitive mm -hmm. way forward. And and there are many similar myths that are very popular these days. Uh, X Men. Mm -hmm. Superman. Right, yeah, there's a whole range of. Uh, Spider Man. There's a whole range of. All science fiction, there's a load of it. There's a, yeah. There's, Superheroes there's some, yeah, of yeah, every yeah, kind. Yeah, there's so much, and it's so popular, and it's all drawing us towards that, towards that goal of, 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 of this richer reality. And a lot of it's very fantastical, of course. A lot of it's very juvenile, of course. But the fact that it's juvenile and fantastical means that it's speaking to the imagination of young people, which, of course, is the future. I often uh, notice that uh, respondents, people who comment uh, on our videos, sometimes refer to what they call um, the indigo children or the star seeds, that, that there's a new wave of, of children being born who have more innate intuitive capacities to begin with from their birth. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the what the star children. I think is where we're at. We've had indigo and crystal. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a the work of Mary Rodwell should be mentioned in this okay. context, and, and individuals who seem to have really quite special abilities, uh, often in, in association with with some kind of uh, UFO connection. Which is where we also come to the new paradigm that we're not just talking about the spiritual development of, of individuals, but we're talking much more uh, like hive mind, collective, global, Gaia, in relationship. We're no longer just in our planet. We now, it's, it's standard science to assume that there is life out there. It's rather irrational to think that that life is not already hundreds of thousands, not to say millions of years advanced on ours. It's rather, therefore, irrational not to conceive of it of already being here on other dimensions. This is perfectly rational thought that science generally would not like to broach, but it's it's rather it's rather rather odd to think that there must be life out there, and yet somehow it, it hasn't come here, even though it must surely be so much more advanced. Yeah, we we got we're going into that we're going into that realm. I I, I feel that of of contact. It's it's increasing. Uh, you go on YouTube, you can see it all over the place. It's very easy to see images of 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 various contacts. Yeah. So one might say, from the perspective of initiation, that the uh, humans on mm. planet Earth, as as a collective, are gradually engaged in in this liminal process right now of conceiving of ourselves not just as citizens of nations uh, on the planet, but as citizens of a, a larger uh, cosmic community. Excellent and. First, we have to be citizens of the world before we can be citizens of anything galactic. So, th to that extent, that's what we talk about when we say that globalism is good. Uh, that's, that's why we have to go in that direction and shutting off borders and putting our country first is really, it's really a, a dead end road. And, you know, we shouldn't, we understand the motivations and they're very real, but it's not going anywhere. And we, we know the future is about becoming one, you know, <laughs> for sure. That's a very profound statement. I, I, <laughs> I, I have a feeling that, you know, there's a, a percentage of, of viewers uh -huh. 
uh, who would be adamantly against that. At least right. they don't want it imposed on them. You know, like by yeah. Uh, yeah. W- w- I know there there are some science fiction movies where the aliens come down. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. Uh, Vin Diesel played some character, as I recall. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. y- you know where where the aliens come down as like Nazis and impose their order on the planet, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> or like the Borg in Star Trek. You will be assimilated. Resistance is futile. <laughs> yeah, and it's a, it's a, it's a, th- those that's the fantasy realm of fiction. But there's plenty of people that believe that we're already in that situation. That the the the, the American deep state since has got the Nazi, and then we go down to the seventh level where we get the reptilian controlling in the very dark way. Uh, yeah, we, we, that's a very much a. a, 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 a sense of things that is present already. And, and, you know, I often rail against this sort of thing because I say there's no evidence uh, for it Mm -hmm. uh, being, you know, scientifically oriented. But I have to acknowledge that it doesn't matter because at Mm. the level of the unconscious uh, Mm -hmm. or subconscious mind, at the level of mythos, Mm -hmm. these things are very real. So we're going to create them. Whether they're factual or or, or, or not, it's like there's this larger um, universe of uh, consciousness, which includes all kinds of uh, demonic as well as angelic forces. And as we work with that darker side, we will be resonating with it and manifesting it. So we will see it in operation and then we will find the evidence that we were looking for that proves that what we were imagining in the first place was correct all the the while. So, yeah, we do in that sense create our, our own realities. There is... It's not a it's not a facile thing to say that we create our own realities and the deep state is a real thing. In fact, the deep state is is a direct translation from Turkish. I'm coming from Istanbul, so Derin Devlet comes from Turkish. It's uh, the deep state is it was invented in 1993 uh, from a single event which revealed the deep state in Turkey. The deep state being that part of the management of the state which is hidden and permanent. Although, of course, peopled by different uh, individuals, so the process of decision making is not known. There's a sense that something's going on, but you, you don't know what you don't know who's in control. And the conspiracy theories that we haven't known who's, who's in control since since Kennedy, at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, that has a lot of legs. It has a lot of legs, and that's in the in like in the UFO community, and you know, it's all about the UFO file. Uh, that, that has a lot of legs. Uh, it's hard to deny an awful lot of aspects of that deeper theory. And I, I personally, I think, yeah, maybe, maybe that's true. Maybe, that, maybe that's driving us, uh, some part of that is driving us in the uh, apocalyptic vision in, in the dark way for, for, uh, for, uh, for destructive processes in order for creative processes to emanate. There may be, there may be a lot in that, but I don't personally like to focus on it. I think we, we need to focus on light. We need to focus on the light side, uh, and take the light into the dark. It doesn't mean, say, getting buried and, and, and fixated on that dark, just acknowledging it, but focusing on how we're going to create, how we're going to grow, how we're going to get better, how we're going to give, how we're going to open our hearts. I think those are the more important things to focus on. We, now you've lived in Turkey for over two decades, yeah, yeah. close to three decades, uh-huh. I, I, yeah. I believe. Uh-huh. And uh, in terms of the future of initiation, hmm. uh, it's interesting to me as as an American to look at a country like Turkey, okay, uh, yeah. because in some ways it's representative of, of the world uh, as a whole in a in a way that maybe the United States is not. Hmm. Turkey hmm. Is, has, has an ancient culture; mm-hmm. we don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the same way, right. um, yeah. Turkey is also known as uh, a, a home of uh, a very powerful esoteric tradition, Sufism. Right. Uh, I mean, I know uh, the Turks revere uh, Rumi. Right, for yeah, example, who was that, actually uh, coming from Iran originally. I, I understand that, but, he, but he's considered <laughs> yeah, yeah, a, his, his a figure adopted, of great yeah. importance in Su- Turkey. Sufi meaning, I think, uh, wool. I think it's, it was the rough wool that they would wear, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and you've explained to me, although uh, Turkey has this tradition of... Uh, 
uh, Sufism and mm -hmm. people, tourists who go to Turkey, as I have on many occasions, uh, can see Sufi rituals that are held for the, the benefit of tourists. The dervish, the whirling. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I mean, that's a genuine, as I understand, it's a genuine tradition, a genuine school, and they, they do do performances, but uh, uh, the performances are, are open. Uh, but but it's, it's also a genuine tradition also. Uh -huh. yeah. So you would say, if, as I recall from our earlier conversation, Sufism yeah. is alive in Turkey, but it's really very small. So far as I know. So far as I know, it's not significant. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, one might have thought that, you know, if, if an esoteric tradition had real power, mm. it might have flourished. Hmm. What happens to esoteric traditions? Uh, they, they are maintained in a, in a rather, in a kind of al alchemical sense as contained and that, and therefore they, they may, they, they, re they retain their strength. As they flourish, they dissipate, and the origins, they become like religions, they become dogma and calcified. Yeah. Maybe that's the way that they can... Well, that that would be the concern I might have right. for uh -huh. the future of initiation uh -huh. if it becomes more widespread in our right. culture. Right, yeah, I mean, that's why I don't like to focus on the ritual aspect and the, the lineage aspect mm -hmm. and the esoteric knowledge aspect. I, I'm much more interested in how initiation a, applies in a a broader mass context like in commoning you can see that in in uh, in education we can bring it into those fields and otherwise it's 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 a it's a, it's a very much a minority pursuit and it might not really apply greatly to what's really happening in the real world and uh, that would be unfortunate mm. Andy Hilton <laughs> 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 we we've covered a lot of ground here. I, so, I don't yeah. know that we've uh, come to any definitive conclusion, but I, under the impression you feel optimistic. Yes, one hundred percent optimistic. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I think we've touched on a lot of bases. We've uh, mentioned a lot of aspects, and uh, there's obviously a lot more to say. But I personally, I'm 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 entirely optimistic. I don't have any problems with people who say it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. I do actually hold that. I think it's, it is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. But when it gets better, we, I, do, I do imagine something that is, is qualitatively raised in terms of the human condition, mm -hmm. in terms of the way we are interacting with each other, in terms of the, the individual fulfillment and the capacities to, to give and to share and to eventually start to take our place in a, in a wider environment. I know some people People compare our present situation to that of uh, the caterpillar uh, forming mm -hmm. a pupa. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I believe that's the term. And, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. we're, we don't know what's going on. We're not right. sure what's going to emerge. But uh -huh. if, if the metaphor of the butterfly is accurate, it will uh -huh. be uh, as, as if we will be transformed into something that's almost an entirely different life form. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's, 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 po and uh, we can also use the model of the cave rather than the, uh, the, the, the pupa, and then we're going to be initiated into, <laughs> so it's a, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that's an optimistic view and a hopeful view, and it's not unrealistic, I don't think. There's mm -hmm. plenty of signs. It's always hard to judge, surely, the present moment from the present moment. I mean, everybody in all times always thought that this is a particular moment of disaster or possibility. Is this one particularly more important than other important moments? One has the sense, yes, and there are some reasons for saying so, the way the world is interconnecting, the way the ecological disasters that seem to be uh, facing us, the apparent contacts with extraterrestrials, terrestrial <laughs> realms uh, or into inter inter there's, there's a very yeah realms. yeah yeah the, the the virtual world that we create there's so many there's so many signs that show that or indicate that we really are 
moving to a, a different phase of existence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Andy Hilton, thank <laughs> you so much for sharing your your insights, your wisdom, your uh, scholarship, <laughs> and uh, your perspectives with me. I really appreciate you being here. Well, it's been a, a wonderful opportunity, and of course, I've been very happy to share, and more than that, to, to gain from your own wisdom and your experience and what you are offering and this wonderful facility that you're offering all YouTube viewers. And thank you for being with us.